your mind back to 2015. It was a pretty good year for the naturally aspirated high revving supercar. The Porsche 991 GT3 RS and Lamborghini Huracan were fresh faced kids on the block and from Maranello we had the 458 Speciale Aperta and F12 TDF. Amongst a very enviable stable of other Ferraris, our friend Pete aka Too Many Cars happens to own both. Today is one of those days where you all tell me to go and get a real job because Pete is a special mix of generous and brave and he's offered us the keys to drive both back to back. Friend Pete, aka Too Many Cars, has given us some pretty awesome opportunities. I'm sure you'll agree though that this time he has really come up trumps with these two. We're going to go in order of cylinders and start with the V8 458 Speciale Aperta, or Special Open if you want to translate into English. <laughs> Mechanically identical to the Speciale Coupe, we have a 4.5 litre naturally aspirated V8 with a hair under 600 brake horsepower. Just 499 units were produced worldwide and just 49 of those are right hand drive like this one. And if that wasn't rare enough, this is actually the only one in this colour combo in the world. So it's yellow triplo strato, the triple layer yellow, with the tricolore stripe, tricolore on the steering wheel and even the flaps at the back are tricolore as well. If you were one of the very few to be offered one of these new, list price was just under £230,000. Now you're looking more like five fifty to six hundred thousand. That's four hundred thousand or more over and above a four five eight Spider. But what makes this so special in terms of Ferraris is it was the very last naturally aspirated V8. The piste is amazing, but God will miss that engine. It's amazing in the Speciale Coupe, but being able to hear it so much more with the roof off. God, it's awesome. First thing on English roads is straight into bumpy road mode. And it's honestly not too firm. It copes with the bumps nicely. As we've come to expect from modern Ferraris, the steering is super fast. The gearbox is so sharp. It jolts you in the back on the way up and down. And you don't need to be going a million miles an hour to hear that noise. And to say it has 600 horsepower through the rear wheels, traction is remarkably good. Which is more than I've been told about the TDF in front. Right, should we see what it's really like then? The brakes as well, the brakes are amazing. You can feel compared to the Speciale Coupe that it isn't quite as rigid when you go over the bumps you do get a little bit more flex what does it matter when you can hear it like that now it goes without saying that with 600 horsepower it is fast but I feel like it's usably fast with that naturally aspirated power band it's so linear you can actually get flat in this car on the road if you want to Something like a Pista is so spiky. I feel like you're driving that at sort of five tenths of that all the time. You can use the power in this, but it's still enough to feel really quick. Now, Pete is in the very enviable position of owning all of the lightweight V8 Ferraris. And for him, this is the one. Even over the Pista, just because of the noise. I can see why. I've always had a soft spot for the 430s because of that little bit more raw with a single clutch gearbox. But I totally see where Pete's coming from because you've got the rawness with that engine, but you've still got the modern day capability and speed. The Speciale is like the perfect blend of all the hardcore V8 Ferraris and the Aperta is the most special of a special bunch. <laughs> So we've just come from the perfectly balanced Speciale Aperta 
into this stark raving lunatic. Right, let me cool down for a sec. The standard F12 is about the only car I can ever remember Jeremy Clarkson saying has too much power. This has more power still. It's the same 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12, but we've got 769 brake horsepower all through the rear wheels. Now the Speciale was on the super sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. This is on Pirelli P0 courses, which Pete says makes it a little bit more sketchy. And usually Pete's the kind of guy who just says, just take my car, do what you want with it. This one though, I had to have a little talking to first to basically say, be careful. He said, have you driven one before? I said that I've driven an F12, a normal F12 in the wet. And he's like, nah, totally different animal. And um, yeah, he's right. After the Aperta, you really have to be awake driving this thing. It's over 100 kilos lighter than a normal F12. It's actually not much over 1500 kilos. So despite being quite a big car, it's not all that heavy. And you can feel like the steering's quite light. And despite that massive engine up the front, the nose, <laughs> it just darts in. That's also helped by the active rear wheel steering. It's just alive on a road. Some people might not like it. It is very alive. It moves around all over the place. You definitely need to be more of a driver and more awake to drive this than the Speciale. And I think most people would go faster in the Speciale because it's that much more accessible. But if you want to raise the hairs on your neck, this is the one. Like the styling matches its attitude as well, doesn't it? I mean, have you ever seen anything that looks so angry from the front? Just look at it. It's not quite as rare as the Aperta, 799 units worldwide. Don't actually know how many of those are right hand drive, but it's a very rare beast. Just like the Speciale as well, you have to be a very regular and very well liked customer of Ferrari to be offered the chance to cough up 340 grand for a TDF. But if you did, it'd be worth over double that now. And it's probably about half a million quid more than a normal F12. But the thing with these cars, neither of them are about value. It, like, the people buying these cars don't care they're half a million quid more than an F12. And they don't care if it's worth it or not. They're all about the heart. So, shall we see what the TDF does to the heart? God, I said, let's see what it does to the heart. It's enough to be a heart attack. <laughs> God, that engine, it is wild. That's the word for this car, it is wild. Those flyby shots you see in where it sounds like I'm wide open, I have to confess that on a lot of them, they're part throttle because even on a day like today, it's 23 degrees, blazing sunshine, dry tarmac. It's just so leery if you put it wide open. It turns in like a mid-engine car. And to say it has that sort of power, traction is pretty magical, really. Now, I'm sure you've heard Mr. JWW in his TDF talking about the relationship between that V12 and this double clutch gearbox, and there's a reason for that. Just watch these downshifts. One thing I should say on roads like this, it is really wide. You're sort of on the cat's eyes and still in the hedge over there. And it makes it very intimidating after the Speciale. When cars come the other way, especially when you're in a car of this value that isn't yours, it's a little bit like, not very nice. But on a wide open smooth road, oh God, there can't be much like it. It's one of those cars that your chances to go flat are very slim, but when you do, God, it takes your breath away. What a machine. I think I need to go and cool down. Days like this do not come around very often. 
a full day of blazing sunshine in England for a start. But seriously, driving these two in this weather on these roads was an unreal experience. The attention they get, the noise they make, the thrill they give, they're as razor sharp as the latest and greatest, but those atmospheric engines retain that old school emotion that makes these cars so special. These engines are the reason owners like Pete always say, the Pista's great, but the Speciale is the one. These two cars are like chalk and cheese. The Aperta's beautifully balanced and a total joy to thread down a road, with a noise in your ears and the wind in your hair, or a sunburn head in my case. The TDF, wow. It's the wildest car I've ever driven with the most savage engine I've ever experienced. It is a total animal. If you ask me which one I'll take for a week in the Alps, it would be the Aperta. If you ask me which one I'll remember for the rest of my life, it could only be the TDF. A big thank you to Pete for allowing us to experience these incredible cars. Let us know which one you'd have in the comments below, and please subscribe to help us on our way to 150k. I think I'll be happy just to get back home today and like alive.